A bent horizon is something that will ruin an otherwise good image. Let me show you how we can fix that in Lightroom. As always, feel free to follow along by downloading the RAW file from the link in the description of this video and now let's begin. Ok, this is our unedited RAW file. At first this might seem ok, but taking a closer look at the horizon you can see it is bent. Now depending on the lens you are using, this bent effect will be stronger or weaker and it also depends on how your composition looks like. Placing the horizon on the dead center of the frame will lessen a debending effect. On the other hand, if you are putting the horizon closer to the edge of the image, this bending effect might get stronger. So as you see, this effect has a lot to do with your lens choice. So how can we fix that? Simple. We are going into the lens correction settings and the first thing we want to do is to just check remove chromatic aberration. This does have nothing to do with the bend effect. That's just something I always check for every image. And then what we want to do next is we want to enable the profile corrections. Usually Lightroom will automatically detect the lens you have used for an image. However, since I was using a lens adapter, Lightroom cannot detect the lens I used. So I need to set the lens profile manually. So I was using a Canon lens. I'm going to choose Canon in this drop down menu. Lightroom does automatically suggest a lens model, but in this case it's wrong. You can also see using the wrong profile will end up with an inverted band effect on the horizon. And of course that's not what we want. So we got to choose the right model here. I shot this on the Canon 16-35 f4 lens right here. And right away you can see if I deactivate the lens corrections how this profile correction helped to unbend the horizon. It's a quite significant change plus the profile corrections also help reduce vignetting if that's what you're looking for. Just take a look at the edges of the image as they get brighter with the profile corrections. Now in the case that this is still not enough to fix a bent horizon, you can make use of the distortion slider down here and try to fix it manually. And if this does not help, you can always go into the manual tab and again just use the distortion slider right here. Keep in mind, this way you will lose some image information towards the edges of the image as you can see right here. But you can always check the constraint crop tool to fix that. Since the lens corrections have fixed that already, I don't want to use this slider right here. I'm happy with this. And that's how you can easily fix a bent horizon using this simple Lightroom tool. Of course, this also works in the camera raw editor if you prefer using that. Now, after we fix the horizon, we also want to edit this image. So feel free to stay. I want to start in the basic adjustments and the very first thing I'm going to do is to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape for more saturation. Now this image has a super heavy blue color cast. I want to fix that right away by bringing up the temperature and I'm pretty much just eyeballing that until I get a result that looks good to me. So let's go very, very high somewhere around here. I think that looks quite good. I like how this color trail has this yellow color to it now. Exposure wise, at the moment I think it's a little bit too bright. I want to change that by bringing down the highlights. This mostly affects the sky in a nice way. Just around here. At the same time, I want to slightly bring up the exposure to preserve some details right here in the landscape in the foreground. I do want to bring down the shadows to add contrast and to prevent underexposure because we have reduced the shadows I'm going to increase the blacks right around here. Let's leave it at that point for now and I'm also going to bring up the whites. Okay, I think that looks much better. I do want to make this image sharp and clear, so I'm going to add texture. I'm also going to add a little bit of clarity and I'm going to even add a bit of dehaze. And at this point, let's introduce some vibrance. Okay, that looks great. We can compare the image to before real quick. You can see everything is looking much, much better, especially the color tones. We can improve this image some more with a bit of masking, of course, so that's going to be the next step. 
Let's head into the masking menu. And right away, I'm going to use a linear gradient covering pretty much all of the sky like this. And I'm just going to bring up the contrast. And I'm going to bring down the blacks. This will make the sky just a bit darker. However, these settings do affect the saturation in a very, very bad way. We don't want to have a blue sky like this. So I'm going to fix it by dropping the saturation. Perfect. Let me use another linear gradient for the top part of the sky, just like that. And I am going to drop the exposure. Right around here looks good. Let's adjust the size a bit. So it doesn't look too unnatural, but I think this looks great. Then I do want to add a little bit of glow coming in from the from the left side. I'm going to create a radial gradient for that. Let's make it nice and big like this. It's important to keep the center of this radial gradient outside of the image to get the, to make this effect look a little more natural. And in here, I wanna just bring down the dehaze for this glow effect. We can drop it quite a bit. And I could introduce some more brightness by bringing up the whites. I'm going to further adjust the size here, but I really like how this looks. We could even bring up the blacks. Okay, this looks nice. Now, next up, I want to also work on that color trail. I'm going to use a color range mask. And let's see if we can pick the right color tone. Let's choose this one right here in the bright light source. This worked perfectly however i want to subtract this big light in the center because i don't want to change it let me subtract what's going on now it works okay what i want to do here is i want to increase the temperature making those lights a little bit warmer and i'm also going to add some clarity just to give them some more punch perfect and finally i want to work on all of that landscape without the the ocean or the sky. So I'm going to choose a color range mask and I'm clicking, let's say, right in the ocean. Now this does select a little more than expected. I'm going to refine that color range mask. I think that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to invert this mask. Now what I want to do next is I want to say subject and choose select sky to get rid of the sky. I do want to refine the color range mask a little bit. Let's bring it up a notch. And I guess I'm going to say subtract linear gradient, taking a bit away from both sides. So from the left, and let's subtract another linear gradient coming in from the right. And I think I want to be extra safe. I'm using another linear gradient coming down from the top like this. Maybe even let's subtract the brush. So what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to bring up the exposure and I'm also going to bring up the clarity to add some extra punch, just like this, but that's it for the masking adjustments. Let's compare to before without the masks with masking applied. So that's looking great. We are almost done editing this image. Now just a little bit of color grading. We are going to start in the color mixer. And I want to bring up the orange saturation as well as the yellow saturation for this color trail. And I'm going to slightly bump up the blue saturation just for the surrounding stuff. Then I'm going to head into the color grading tab for some split toning. I want to apply a warm color to the highlights, which will mostly affect the car light trails. So right here in the yellow range. And I'm going to slightly bring up the saturation, not too much because that would look very weird. And then let's head into the midtones. And here we want to apply a cold color tone. So right around here. And let's bring up the saturation a notch. Again, not going too crazy, just a little bit to have some kind of color contrast going on. That looks great. As always, I also want to head into the calibration tab. For this image, I just want to bring up the saturation of all those three colors. And I'm quite happy with this. Okay, now the last thing we want to do in Lightroom is the sharpening. So let's head into the details tab. And I'm using the same settings as always. Bring down the radius, 
increase the details, hold down the Alt key while adding some masking, just like this. We only want to sharpen the landscape in the foreground and then increase the amount of sharpening. And we're done. Perfect. So that's pretty much it for the editing part in Lightroom. Actually, there are a few sensor spots. I planned on removing them in Photoshop, but I guess I can do this in Lightroom as well. So let's use the healing brush. To make these sensor spots a little more visible, I'm going to hit Visualize Spots. And here we can clearly see where they are located. And I'm just going to brush over them. So that's looking good. And here we have the cleaned up image. So I hope this little Lightroom tutorial was helpful. As always, if you have questions or have anything to add, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.